So here's all the identities we're going to be using. So you want to cut this page out and keep it. Uh, but the main ones are right up here that you want to deal with constantly. Remember the rest of them are all formed using these. Assign and difference, sum and difference, your Pythagorean identities, and your reciprocal identities. All right, so let's try some with half angles. So first there's a little error right here. That should be a squared. So this is really sine squared theta over one minus cosine theta. So when you see a half angle, you want to apply it. So our cosine u over two is the square root of this. So we end up with two cosine squared theta over two. Remember, we want to tell us where we are starting and then we place it in. So plus or minus square root one plus cosine theta all over two squared. And then the square will cancel the square root and the plus or minus giving us one plus cosine theta over two. Okay, so this obviously doesn't look anything like what we're going for which is sine squared theta over one minus cosine theta. But the twos do cancel. We end up with one oops, one plus cosine theta. So don't give up. What you want to do now is look at it and see what you need to introduce. So we need a denominator of one minus cosine theta and we don't have one. So if I just write one down there and then multiply by one as well, this is completely legal. This is multiplying by one. One minus cosine theta is the same as one minus cosine theta. So they cancel to make one. And then look what we just introduced. It's difference of squares. So this is one minus cosine squared theta all over one minus cosine theta. So this times this is one Remember the middle two cancel and then minus cosine squared theta. And what is one minus cosine squared theta? Well, that is sine squared theta. It's our Pythagorean identity. And look at that. There we go. We proved it. So let's try another one. What if it's cosecant squared theta? Well, cosecant is the same as one over sine squared a over two. So we're just gonna use the sine. And the sine is the one minus cosine u. So the same thing, this is why we're using squares as the squares will get rid of the square root a in this case, and everything will work out. So that square cancels and we end up with one over one minus cosine a over two. And again, this is just a denominator. So reciprocal would be, remember this is one divided by this. And when you divide, you reciprocal it. So that is this. Okay. Now we come over here and what we need is secant a minus one. So this is completely legal. You can come over here and write what it is. This is one over cosine a and one over cosine a minus one. So we need this to be <coughs> cosine a, right? So a trick is to just divide it. If you divide each of these by cosine a, you will get it. And if you look at it, there is a one over cosine a two here. So if you look at this, we have the two. What are we missing? The one over cosine a. So wherever you think about it, that is what we're adding. So either to the bottom, or the top, but no matter what, you have to multiply top and bottom by that. And again, we're gonna put another one over here as reference, just cause we're gonna distribute it just so we can see it. It's not actually here, okay? So not here, it's just for reference, okay? <clears throat> so we end up with two, one over cosine A, and then on the bottom, one over cosine A, and then as we distribute that, we get one. Okay, we're getting there, right? See it now? Okay. So now we can say, well, that's secant. And that's secant. And there we go. That is exactly what we are trying to prove. So sometimes rewriting one side just to give you a target can help you see what you need to put on each one. All right, thank you.